Would you like to learn about cloud access security brokers? If so, this video is for you. In this video, we're going to discuss what is a cloud access security broker, how cloud access security brokers work, and then we'll walk you through architecturally the architectural options you can use with your cloud access security brokers. So to begin, what is a cloud access security broker? Well, a cloud access security broker is really going to be a policy enforcement point that's gonna be placed between the, the cloud service customers, your users, if you will, and the cloud service providers. The point here is to manage and enforce the enterprise's security policies and the cloud resources that are gonna be accessed. Now, if we think about how we would manage access in a modern environment that includes two to three clouds and numerous software as a service providers like Google, Microsoft, Salesforce, and others. Imagine managing all these systems and having all these systems that don't talk to each other and no way to centrally manage policies. That's why we need a cloud access security broker often called a CSAP. And that's gonna be to protect an organization through preventing problems, monitoring problems, and mitigation techniques. So the cloud access security brokers can literally monitor activity. They can warn, uh, say, security administrators of malicious activity, and they can potentially even block threats like malware and other threats as they're occurring as a policy violation so it doesn't actually occur and take down the system. So how is it that these CSABs or cloud access security brokers work? Well, what happens is they get put somewhere in between in some way, shape, or form, in most cases, the user and uh, the cloud provider. And uh, it can be done via three architectural ways. One way it can be done via inline with a forward proxy, a reverse proxy, and an API. And we're going to talk about all of them. We're going to architecturally map them out. The first approach is going to be a forward proxy. Now, a forward proxy is going to sit, and let me architecturally show this for you, between the user and the endpoint. So let's say we're in a normal environment without a forward proxy. The user would connect to the cloud provider. Maybe it's cloud provider A, cloud provider B, or SaaS provider A, or SaaS provider B. And it's directly connected. But we have no way to control it here. But if we move into something called the forward proxy, I can explain to you how that actually works. So now with the forward proxy, we have the user over here and the user wants to connect the cloud provider. So in some way, shape or form, whether it's an agent on the system, whether it's a DNS redirect or something, instead of the user being able to go directly to the endpoint, the user is sent to this forward proxy. Now, when the request goes to the forward proxy, the forward proxy can actually look at it and it can say, uh, is, it, is, it, is the content right? Is the request right? Is what you're trying to do legitimate? And then it, the forward proxy can then reach out to the appropriate cloud provider and then respond. And then the forward proxy will send it back to the user. Now, architecturally, why would people use this? Well, we can analyze the content going on between the user and the endpoint. We can make sure that data doesn't leak the endpoint with some type of data loss prevention strategies to make sure that if we don't want data pulled or exfiltrated from the cloud, we can protect that over here. We could potentially even use context-aware access because now we can look at where the user is, is the user in a right response, and, and use additional forms of authentication. For example, if I spend my days in, say, Port St. Lucie, Florida, and uh, and say uh, Napetamos, Greece, and those are the two places that I spend my time. If out of nowhere there's a login from Mike Gibbs and it's coming from uh, the country of Georgia, for example, and that's one of the few places that, that I've never been in my life, uh, then all of a sudden the context of where I am could say, uh, are you sure you're you? Send you an additional challenge or request. So there's lots of ways we can add a lot with these forward proxies to use more authentication. 
We can even now tokenize the data so we can make sure that when some of the data leaves here, what's actually being sent is safer data. So there's a lot of things we can do here in this forward proxy environment. So that's going to be your forward proxy uh, architecture. Now, that's because it sits between you and the provider. So now let's go to the reverse proxy sort of environment. Okay, now let's look at a reverse proxy uh, architecture. And in a reverse proxy architecture, the uh, proxy is going to be close to the actual cloud providers as opposed to the users. So let's walk through this architecturally and talk about what does it mean. It means with a reverse proxy, this cloud access security broker is basically here, close to the users. And what it's going to do is it's going to intercept and inspect traffic before it reaches the cloud application. So you'll be sent here off and be a, say, a DNS redirect or something, or some D DNS type environment, which is going to push you to the reverse proxy, and the reverse proxy will then reach out to these endpoints and or, or cloud providers. And in that way, there's control over what's going on. Now, one of the things with the reverse proxy is it typically requires no configuration on the user's device. Often with a forward proxy, you have to configure the user's device to reach out to it. Now, in this environment, you don't have to do that. So because you don't have to do that, uh, you need less control, which makes this a little more elegant, although you may lose some of the functionalities you might get with the forward proxy. So keep this in the back of your mind. So this cloud access security broker here, for the most part, works without putting anything or paying any attention to the user. So I want you to think about that. So let's say we've got this user and this user wants to go to say Microsoft Office 365. What'll happen is they'll go to connect to what it, what should be. They'll get this DNS redirect that'll go to the reverse proxy and then the reverse proxy can do anything that it needs to to enhance security, which means we've got traffic inspection and control because the cloud access security broker will monitor the communications between the end user and what's going on to the, to the cloud provider or SaaS provider. Uh, we have the ability to do deep threat analysis and data loss prevention. So that actually means that we can look and see what's actually going on and see if any kind of data is trying to come out or be exfiltrated and we can block that. And we typically have some good real time monitoring in this environment where the reverse proxy of the cloud access security broker provides real-time protection, is constantly monitoring user activity and applying policies to really prevent any kind of unauthorized access or data breaches or compliance violations. So it's really gonna help us handle responses, which is a great environment. Now that brings us into the API-based uh, C sub type architectures and an API-based uh, cloud access security broker architecture is going to be an out-of-band solution to secure this, say, a SaaS application. Now, in-band typically means in the line of traffic, for example. So it's over the network, the first two we were talking about. It's on the network path on the way to between the user and the cloud provider. Now, here is API-based security, so it's going to be a little bit different. Now, in in the API environment, what we're dealing with is we're going to be connecting to a, a cloud provider, say, API. So the user is going to still connect directly to the SaaS application, the SaaS provider. But what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be monitoring the APIs of the provider. So, for example, we can be pulling logs from the cloud providers and we can be seeing what's going on between the users over here and the SaaS providers over the network. So we can, uh, for example, with the API based approach, uh, look at files and things that are stored in the cloud applications and detect issues that are not supposed to be there. Uh, we can see that there's something funny going on uh, from some logs that were pulled from an API. So after we get this information, we can say, hey, something's going on. We can identify a policy violation. And then uh, we may, our cloud access security broker can revoke uh, rights or sharing rights for that person applying encryption on the future. Now, what's good about this is there's nothing that we need to do. There's no agents that need to be placed upon the users, what have you. But... I want you to understand what you're giving up for that convenience. 
all this information is only good going to be whatever we're going to use the API to get log information. So we're going to get after the fact information retrospective. So in this environment, what you're actually seeing is after the occurs, we're going to get information from logs and then we might do something about it, which is going to be very different than this environment. We've got a policy violation in real time. The reverse proxy can fix it. Or even in the, in, even in, 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 this is a reverse proxy, they can fix it. But uh, even if we're in a forward proxy environment, the forward proxy can also fix it because we're going to the proxy before it gets there and we're doing this in real time. So as you can see, this might be slightly less effective as an architectural approach from catching security violations in real time. But the API's based approach is very simple and elegant. Bring your own devices. You have no control over your devices and where they're coming in. If a proxy is impractical for some reason, then this API based approach works. So why would you really want to be see what's going on? Why would you really want a cloud access security broker? Well, a lot of things. One is we need visibility into what's going on with our systems to find uh, sanctioned applications and unsanctioned applications that you'll see on the systems. And that will give security teams information on how to protect themselves. When I was young, I ran around with a sniffer and I uh, was trying to figure out what kind of application traffic was coming in to figure out what was viol viol policy violations were. I did that in my first senior engineering job for a couple of months before I moved into architecture. But if we can get it in real time, that, that helps mitigate that need. And we can't just necessarily snick a protocol analyzer on the LAN of the cloud provider in much the same way. There, we can do certain things, but not, ca not capture the entire internet path along the way. Data loss prevention, keeping critical information from leaving the systems is something we definitely want to do. We don't want that person stealing the secret formula for something and selling it to someone else. So uh, another reason we might use cloud access security brokers. Threat protection, something that's going to be detecting in real time, malware, ransomware, compromised credentials, and even block various uh, behavioral anomalies is a good thing. And that's typically we, why we want to use some type of a cloud access security broker. Now, from a compliance and audit perspective, if you're in a regulated industry like healthcare, say in the US and you need HIPAA, or you need some kind of GDPR compliance for regulatory purposes, it becomes fairly challenging in making sure your data doesn't leave territorial boundaries and your data is protected depending upon which of these uh, regulatory frameworks you need. And these cloud access security brokers can help a lot with that. And it also makes it easier because we might have a data loss uh, prevention strategy solution, another cloud access security broker, zero trust network architecture. And the closer we can get all these things to integrate into one thing, the better we're, we're there. So that's one of the reasons you'll see a lot about cloud access security brokers. They enhance efficiency and they protect large distributed environments. So in this video, we discussed what is the cloud access security broker, how a cloud access security broker works, and the architectural approaches with cloud access security brokers, including forward proxy, reverse proxy, and API-based architectures. Now, if you'd like to become a cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architect, uh, AI architect, network architect, or any other kind of architect, we have uh, programs to help you build your cloud architecture or any other architecture career. Now, we we have a free webinar which we offer every week on how to become an architect. We'll go over what we do in these architectural roles, the skills you need in these architectural roles, and it'll be live and free on Zoom. So you can ask me any type of cloud architect, security architect, enterprise architect, AI architect, career questions, and I'll do anything I can to help you on this free webinar. You can find the description for this webinar in uh, the description of this video. Uh, you can sign up for that webinar and hope to meet you there and talk to you there. Now, also, if you're in the description of this video, I want to let you know that we have a lot of things to help you. Documents on the skills you need, for example, or how to become a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or an AI architect. We've got documents on how to win the interview. So they're all free. So go sign up for some, and I hope it helps you in your architecture career. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I hope to see you in another video or a free webinar. Take care.